Hello everyone. In the previous video, we looked at how operations are batched together and they succeed as a whole or fail as a whole. Uh, so if I go back to the running application, uh, so if I go ahead and create an entry, and notice in this entry, the first entry is valid uh, because all the fields are filled. Uh, in the second entry is invalid because email is null and the backend expects uh, some value for all of these fields. Uh, so when I submit changes, uh, this is going to fail. So if I look at the batch request and the response, uh, this is going to fail uh, because the email is uh, uh, is sent as null. Uh, and this is because uh, with SAP UI5, we are sending it as a batch request. And if you look at the header itself, uh, the URL that we are sending it is to the batch endpoint. Uh, and in the payload, uh, within the payload uh, is where we specify which entity set to target. Uh, so let's see how this batch operation works uh, in OData service. And for this, I'm going to go to the next branch. Uh, so if I go to to my application itself. And you can see that in this branch that I'm using, use batch is true. In the next uh, branch, I'm going to disable the batch operation itself. Uh, so if I go to the next branch right here, and in this next branch, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to disable this batch. Uh, so at this moment, if I go back to my application, uh, let me go ahead and run it as well. Uh, so because batch, uh, we are not, uh, we, are, we have disabled batch request, uh, this is going to send all the requests as individual requests. Uh, so if I go ahead and create a local entry, uh, so I'm going to say A, A and A, and then create another one B and B. Uh, so in this case, because it's not going to be sent as a batch, I'm going to remove the batch. Uh, let me also remove all the entries in here. Uh, now, when I submit changes, uh, notice that one of the employees uh, succeeds, the AAA succeeds, uh, the one with the invalid values uh, fails. And you can see that the endpoint is also different. It's not the uh, batch dollar batch endpoint. Uh, it is uh, targeting the employees in the URL itself. Uh, so this is how the, uh, if you are not using batch, uh, so they're all sent as individual uh, requests. Uh, but what I really want to do is I still want to use batch, uh, but I want to have finer control over how the batch operates. Uh, so for this, I need to understand how batch processing works in OData service. Uh, so if I go to my slide deck right here, uh, so this is how batch processing works in OData service. Uh, so what is batch processing? Uh, we've already seen it. Uh, it allows you to group multiple operations into a single HTTP request. Uh, and uh, yeah, so it is sent as a post request. So this is uh, important to know. And the dollar batch is the endpoint. And then within the payload is where we specify which, uh, 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 which entity set to target. Uh, and the header also has uh, uh, the content type needs to be multi-part mixed, and then it should have a boundary specification. So if I go in here, uh, okay, so this is not batch, so you won't be able to see it, uh, but in the next uh, branch, we should be able to see it. Now, the payload itself for the uh, batch, uh, so let me go ahead to the next branch. So if I go get checkout nine, So now that we have the application running with this, the ninth branch, uh, so here we have more control over the batch, but I will come to what changes have been made in the code later. Uh, but if I go into my application itself, uh, so here if I go ahead and uh, refresh, uh, so here, uh, let me put back batch, uh, because now I have enabled batch in this uh, branch. And here, uh, if I go ahead and uh, let's say delete this and say submit changes, it's going to be sent as a batch. Uh, so the endpoint you can see is a dollar batch and then the content type is going to be multi-part mixed and then the boundary equals batch. And if I go into this payload itself, uh, you can see that there is a batch and then some kind of an ID right here. Uh, so this is what you would see in this uh, right here, this batch and this uh, EB53 and that's part of this batch batch EB53 right here. And this batch has a single chain set and we will talk about what is a chain set. So there is this uh, thing called this chain set and this one has a single chain set inside of it. And, and this is uh, deleting this employees as you can see. 
And then uh, you can also see that there are multiple get operations. So there is a get to do the count. There is another get to do the uh, employees itself, to get the employees itself. Uh, so this is a single batch operation. Uh, there is a delete operation, which is part of a chain set. And then there are a couple of uh, get requests. So the um, the batch request, uh, so as we have seen, you can have any number of get operations. So we saw that there are a couple of uh, get operations right here, get employees and then the get employees dollar count. And then we have a chain set and we also saw there is a chain set. But what exactly is a chain set? Uh, so a chain set uh, is uh, any, like it's a create, update or delete operation. So it's a group of uh, create, update, or delete operations. And it cannot contain a get request. So within the chain set, so this is the chain set, the starting of the chain set, and this is the end of the chain set. And this only has one delete. Uh, but inside of this, you cannot have a get request. Uh, so you can have uh, uh, an insert, a post request, uh, or a merge request also within this chain set, uh, but you cannot have a get request. And um, uh, it cannot be nested, so a chain set cannot contain a chain set. And what uh, the OData uh, protocol uh, dictates is that the chain set should act as a transaction. Uh, so in this case, there's only one delete operation, but let's assume that there are two delete operations. Uh, so if one of them failed and the other one succeeded, uh, so since this chain set should act as a transaction, uh, both of them will fail. Uh, so they both have to either succeed or they both will fail. Okay, so uh, this is an example of a batch request body. So you can have any number of get requests. So we already saw that. So you can have a get request, get request. Uh, you can also have any number of chain sets. And like I said, within the chain set, you can have any number of uh, create, update, or delete operations. And they all act as a transaction. So chain set A will act as a transaction. Uh, chain set B will act as a transaction by itself. Uh, so in this, uh, so this is like how the body looks like. Uh, so you can pretty much uh, copy this, uh, uh, copy this payload right here, uh, and you can put it in your Postman and also run it. So uh, here I have a Postman collection right here. Uh, so as you can see, uh, you can. This is the uh, endpoint. So you can copy the endpoint, which is a dollar batch, and then you can copy your. Uh, uh, the payload from here, you can uh, simply copy the payload from here, uh, put it in this payload right here. Now, the only thing is in the headers, uh, you have to set this multi-part mixed and then boundary equals. And then this batch, uh, this value for the batch, uh, you should make sure that it is uh, this batch right here. Uh, uh, this is uh, so that uh, it it matches, right? Uh, so the payload, whatever the batch request is in the payload, uh, make sure you put that in the header as well. And you can uh, submit this to the backend. Okay, um, so let's see how this, uh, what uh, changes have been made in the, uh, in this uh, branch right here. So what I want to do in this branch in is, um, I've set the batch, use batch to true. Okay, so now it's going to be sent as a batch. Uh, and the, what I want to do is I want to have finer control over this chain set. Uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, anytime I do just the create, and I'm just doing this for a create, uh, is every time I create an entry, I'm going to put it into a chain set. So I've created a, a, an ID, a random ID, and every time I create, and we know how we've done this, so you can simply, uh, we're using the uh, binding object, and then we are doing the create on the binding object. Uh, but along with the initial values, I'm also setting that as a new chain set. Uh, so, so what happens now is uh, every time I do a create, uh, so this, every time I do a create, uh, it's going to have a new chain set. Uh, so let me do a create now. Uh, so A, A, and A. Uh, so this is going to be put inside of a chain set. Now, if I do another create, uh, so this uh, B, B, and B, uh, this is also going to be put in a different chain set. And if I go C and C, and leave the email blank, uh, this is going to be in a completely different chain set. Uh, so even though they're all part of the same batch request, uh, this batch request is going to have three separate chain sets. Now we all know that a chain set will act as a transaction, uh, and because uh, these 
they're all in different chain sets, um, these two will succeed, uh, whereas uh, this one should fail. Uh, so if I go ahead and submit the changes, uh, you can see that there is a single batch request that is being sent to the backend. Uh, so if I look at the payload, uh, you see there is the change set one. Uh, so this is, starts with 7A4C. And this ends right here, 7A4C ends right here. So in this change set, uh, there was just this one post uh, with A, A, and A. And then you see that there is another change set, uh, this time with the ID uh, F0 something. And this, uh, if you see, uh, this also has a post request. Uh, and this is going to be of a BBB. And then there is also another change set uh, the third one, which is uh, the CCC. Um, so you have three chain sets uh, and each are going to act to, uh, as a separate transaction. And if I go into the response itself, you can see that this one succeeded, uh, this one succeeded, first and second succeeded, uh, but then the third one failed uh, because uh, it didn't have uh, the, the value for email. So this, this way, you have finer control over how things are sent to the backend, and you can also um, like uh, add stuff that needs to be part of a transaction uh, within a change set. Hope this helps. Thank you.